Hello, welcome to the Gunshot with me, John. Today, we're gonna to be having a look at this, the Seiko 85 Black Wolf, or as it probably should be called, the Soko 85 Black Wolf. <laughs> So what makes this a Black Wolf Part 1 is the stock. The stock is a GRS-esque laminate quick adjustable stock and it's a matte oil finish on it as well which is quite nice so it doesn't mark too badly unlike some other laminates. Quite simply you have these lovely depressed black buttons, you press them in and they quick adjust to wherever you want. They have a nice locking thing so it's not coming out and these are not fall out buttons like the early GRS's which is quite nice. So you can very quickly adapt this rifle, there we go very quickly put that wherever you want. They do pull out, so there is no non-stop on these. So you can really fit this rifle out for night vision very easily, or just for a decent cheek weld and shoulder fit. You have a little cut out here, so you can really hook your hand in if you're shooting it prone at long range, and it takes a little bit of weight out over the overall weight. The overall weight of this thing is somewhere between four and 4.2 kilos, depending on the caliber and action. Uh, we'll get onto that in a bit, but somewhere between four and 4.2 kilos. So it is a bit of a heavy gun. Price-wise, this gun sits at just over £2,000 for now. Uh, and before we move on, that's actually not really, not that bad for a uh, GRS-esque stocked Seiko action. So on, the grip is checkered and is semi-upright. It is very full and almost like all GRSs, it takes too much of your thumb up. You almost want a little cut out there just so you can grasp a hold of it to make it that little bit more versatile. It's great if your hand sits in that position, but I think as a a more of a versatile grip. I suppose it could be less versatile if this was a true upright target grip, but it's pretty good, it's pretty good. But I think I would want to mildly modify it. I've got fairly long thumbs, you know, PlayStation generation and all that. You have a semi-wide forend. It's really very, very flat and comes with two sling studs. You have a sling stud fitted to the outside and not the underneath of your stock at the back and two on the front. This is so they say so you can fit one for your bipod and one for your sling, even though most bipods come with a sling adapter. What that does in reality actually is put a bipod stud exactly where you'd want to hold your forehand uh, and makes it pretty pretty uncomfortable to shoot offhand. However, I suppose once you've got a sling in, you could bind yourself up. But there's something about the dimensions that doesn't lend this rifle to shooting offhand. Whether it's the way the forehand feels in my hands at least, or the fact there's two studs exactly where I'd want them, who knows, but for a bipod setup rifle, absolutely perfect. Apart from that, there's not a lot more to say about the stock, apart from it is really very, very good looking. I like it, I do like it, to look at if nothing else. And I think as a, again, a prone long range -ish type of rifle, what more could you possibly want? Moving on to the barrel and action. Uh, so this is a 243, so this is a short action. They do short, medium, and long action, covering all calibers from 22 to 50 up to 308 and short. The medium action, 2506, all the way up to 9.3 by 62. And the long action, they only do 7 mil rem and 300 wind mag. Uh, their twist rates are different. Um, I mean, they're all standard, standard Seiko twist rates. They are more hunting twist rate than anything else. There are two barrel lengths available, a 20 inch and a 24 and 3 eighths inch, and that's where that weight variation comes in. The barrel is a fluted medium contour barrel. Uh, it's cold hammer forged, and it's, it's nice. I mean, this whole rifle is clearly designed as a crossover between target and hunting. The weight kind of puts it out of too much mountainous hunting. The barrel is screw cut in 14 by one only, uh, and they all come screw cut. Open sights is not an option. This is just the way a Black Wolf is set up. It has got the Seiko tapered dovetails on top, which is nice. However, given the rest of the rifle, it would have been really nice to see them maybe chuck a Picatinny on there. They're never gonna do that, it's Seiko. But um, it would have been nice to see them do that. This is a three-stage safety catch. You have back and forth, and when you've got back, you've got this little button for a bolt release there. So you press this button in, bolt release comes up, bolt comes back, remove the bolt, standard Seiko button there and it comes out. This reveals our three lug bolt, controlled round feed, and mechanical extraction. Altogether, a recipe for a solid rifle for life. There we go. Magazine, depending on action, you have to push these magazines in to take them out, as we all know. Uh, this is a steel magazine with an aluminium follower in there. This is a five plus one, so one in the action, oh, sorry, one in the chamber, five in the magazine, and in the long action, it's four in the mag and one in the chamber. The trigger is a standard Seiko trigger, fully adjustable all the way out from two pounds to four pounds. With a little bit of work, you can get those down to a real nice, consistent about one and a quarter pound firing weight uh, for those of you who want. It's a shame they didn't chuck a set trigger in here just to make this rifle that little bit more special. That would kind of suit the whole design of a, a more long range hunting rifle or target S rifle. So uh, what do we make of this in a whole? We've drawn a few conclusions already. 
Uh, the weight could be an issue for a hunting rifle. Weighing the fact that it weighs like nearly nine pounds bare is quite a lot. Uh, by the time you chuck a half decent scope on, let's say even at a pound and a half, that's a light scope, and a moderator, this is not gonna be a lightweight rifle. So I think they could probably discount it as a Highland stalking rifle. However, for a woodland stalking rifle where you're only gonna be walking a couple of miles with this on your back, I don't think the weight is such an issue. More to the point, actually bearing the weight, if you took these two studs out, fitted a Spartan internal bipod adapter so you could actually hold the forend as it's designed to be held, it wouldn't be a bad offhand rifle. I like the fact that it's not just a semi-custom, as some people would call it, rifle with a GRS stock slapped on it. This is a Seiko factory rifle. That does, that does tick me a little bit. And certainly this stock flows a little smoother than a GRS. You know, it's just a little bit more ple pleasant on the eye, a little bit sleeker. Not that I dislike GRSs, they are, however, just very different. The grip is a little bit smaller than a GRS, so I suppose it is more versatile than a Berserk or any of the, the Target style GRSs that have a really hand filling grip. So it is that little bit more. However, I really think removing a little bit of meat for your thumb round there would make this rifle absolutely spot on. The two sling studs, I don't get, but I love the contoured barrel. Uh, the tapered contoured barrel with the fluting, that's really very nice. Balance wise, it just brings that all the weight over the center of this rifle. And yeah, you're gonna upset that with a big moderator, but in reality, if you stuck a little lightweight DPT on the end, you wouldn't be unhappy. I'd also love to see Picatinny rails on there, just so you could really maximize the versatility that this rifle should be built for. However, they offer it as an aftermarket thing, so you could just bolt one on and be done with it. And that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Take care. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe to this video, and we'll see you next time.